All right. So today we have a rooftop gas pack. And uh, our guys were here yesterday to do seasonal maintenance on this one, that York over there, and the other carrier over there. Uh, while our guy was here, he noticed the condenser fan was not operating. Unit was starting up, compressor running, condenser fan, no good. Uh, check the capacitor, check the fan, and it needs a new fan and capacitor. So we're gonna do that today. Make sure our power's off. See which way the wires come for the fan, and it looks like it's these guys right here. Let's see. Looks like one up underneath. Up over the top. Black red. Okay. All right. Oh, come around down here. You can see them right here. So we're going to disconnect the cap. Anytime you replace a fan motor, you want to replace the capacitor too. I always make sure I discharge 
capacitor because it holds a charge if they're good they hold a charge and uh, you can get hit I've never been hit off a capacitor but you know, I hear people tell stories about it so I always ground short out my capacitor so Capacitors out, and then we got this guy up here. <sighs> All right, wires are loose, so they should come right out once we pull the fan off. As you can see, I set my bag right in the condensate water. Got the screws out. Now I'm just gonna lift the fan right out. Hopefully those wires will just yeah come right out. Check our fan blade. Doesn't look damaged at all. These blades get messed up at all, you'll end up having to replace them. Even if it's bent a little bit, because it'll wobble while it's running and it'll ruin the bearings on this motor. These bearings are already tight. You can tell, like, it should spin a lot easier than that probably why that little five microfarad capacitor couldn't get it up and going my guy came out and it was just sitting here humming he gave it a little spin and it got up and running so that's a sure sign the bearings are worn out they're tight and uh, time to replace that motor so next we're gonna take this little set screw out I like to put all my hardware off to the side or I'm not going to kick it around, get lost because you lose this little guy it's going to put a lot of time on the day so next what I like to do let's see Hit it with a little abrasive cloth. That rust right there. Uh, this rust right here. If you don't get that off of there, when you try to pull this fan blade off, that rust is going to get stuck, gets jammed inside that hub, and you'll never get this thing off. You can pull on it all day with a puller, spray it, heat it up. 
95% chance it is not coming off. And uh, you'll be looking at getting a new fan blade too. And if that situation happens on a blower motor, you'll be looking at a new blower housing too. And I was in that situation one time. You know, I cleaned it off as best I could, but it was frozen on there. There's nothing I could do. I also like to spray it with a little bit of rust penetrator and that usually does the trick. So I clean it off like this, spray it with the rust buster and uh, should come right off for us. probably use a wire brush here but I like the abrasive cloth this stuff is a little worn out I also like the kind of uh, the abrasive cloth is kind of more like sandpaper you know you got this stuff here like an emery cloth type stuff and this stuff I like this stuff because it can get wet and still work the other stuff the sandpaper type that gets wet it's done but sandpaper does a little better job so I'll try to keep both around this is just what I had in my bag plenty of rust on this one it's pretty good all right I'm gonna go get some rust buster spray I got penetrant oil. Let's give it a good spray. Let it sit for a minute. Now I got hub puller and we're just gonna slide this right over that fan hub and pull it right off I have another type that I like to use but I think I gave it to one of my guys so using this one this is the quote unquote heavier duty one, but I find it not as easy to use, um, especially on a blower, uh, blower motor, pulling a blower motor out. It's just easier to get in with the other one I have. I, I gotta grab, pick up another one. And this one will be fine for today on a condenser motor, but. On a blower, this one's a little tougher. So, you want to line this up so none of these bolts are going to hit that guy there. Put it on basically like this. You get those threads, you don't want to mess up those threads. So, one of these bolts starts trying to turn into that hole gonna mess it up and you end up buying another fan blade Definitely want it on there pretty snug so it doesn't try to slip off. I 
the way these work is you hold that guy there and you're basically just spinning down on this shaft and I'm spinning it by hand and a lot of times you know you spin it by hand it's gonna lift right off and you can see it is it's lifting right off of there so you know lucky for us let's see if it comes all the way off by hand but not always that lucky a lot of times you're backing it up with this and you're turning it with this guy and you just spin it around until it comes all the way off but you can see this one's coming off easy and hey if you sand them and spray them a lot of times they will come off easy there it goes now you want to take that hub off of there take this puller fan blade off to the side now all we got left is a motor sitting here on the grill we want to try to keep if we can keep this guy we don't have to but it's nice to reuse them if you can let's see You know, keep the elements off the wire. Realistically though, the age of this unit, this motor I'm putting in here will outlast the lifespan of this rooftop unit. Now we got four nuts to take off back here. Sometimes I'll give these guys a little spray too. Just gonna use my little adjustable. But you know, you can get a socket. That might actually be see something. Is that five sixteenths? So, let's see if I can get it off without having to get the sockets. There's one. There's two. There's three. Four. All right. These little nuts don't lose them. motor and 
And here's our new motor. Comes with a little mini turbo 200 cap that, uh, you know, everybody knows what these are. Uh, uh, multiple capacitance capacitor. So this one looks like it does 5, 2.5, oh, 7.5. That's probably 5 or 7.5. Maybe you can get 10 out of here. Check. Probably. I may need 10. Let's see. So, this is a rescue motor. Um, Multi-horsepower motor. Um, universal type. Basically, it'll work in a couple different horsepowers and see here uh, half horsepower and quarter horsepower 1075 two speed 208 230 and then our amps 3.2 1.6 so got to make sure it matches what you got in here we have a quarter horsepower 1100 rpm and our amps is pretty much the same so this one will work First thing I like to do is take this guy. This is our little instructional paper, and it'll tell you how to wire it up. It wires up just like the old one. Let's see. So we're going to wire it up in four, four wire, um, which means two hots and uh, two wires for the capacitor. So we won't need a uh, we won't need a, a common coming over to the capacitor, a hot leg coming from the uh, the, capa the, the contactor relay. So. We're gonna wire four wire. Um, you can wire these three wire if you have a dual capacitor, let's say on a residential system. Um, you can do that and you can just eliminate you know, one of these uh, capacitor wires. Not needed. Uh, white stripe. All right, so you can see on here the different uh, horsepowers that this motor will uh, provide and we're at quarter horsepower so that's going to be low red wire with a 10 microfarad capacitor so if you look <clears throat> we got here is These two guys over here, that's the capacitors, wires. And then you got three here, white, red, and black. Your white, you're always gonna use your white, okay? So that's one hot. And then your black and red is high and low, and we're using red, so we're not gonna use this black wire. We're gonna wire tie that off to the side. All right, now, You can see that this motor is a little bit taller than factory motor. So when this is mounted, it's going to put that fan blade about two and a half, three inches deeper than what it was. So we got to make sure that's going to work. Um, after we fired it up the problem is if the fan blade sometimes is too deep and it's not inside this hole 
it can spin and spin and it won't really push any air out. The air will just recycle inside. So just gotta make sure that's not happening. You're not overheating after we're all done, you know? Make sure you got good airflow coming out the top. I think we'll be okay. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off these uh, these guys here because they're gonna be in the way. We're gonna want to put our motor as far down as possible on the shaft. They'll end up hitting these guys here, so we're cutting those off. They don't always come off easy. Let's see here. Uh, there it is. Don't get hit in the eye with one of these when you're cutting them off. He's hard. <clears throat> okay. Now, these guys back here shouldn't be a problem. And you see they give you a little, uh, mounting nut that you can use I don't usually like to use I usually just leave them on there and mount right to it just like that but uh you can use these and I just might because I want to get as close as possible um to the motor because it's so much bigger than that one and that's the thing rescue motors you know, they're one size fits a few, so, you know, this one goes all the way up to half horsepower. So it's a little bit bigger, but I think it'll do the job. This guy over here, this will uh, reverse the rotation of the fan. So, you know, after you're done, you start it up and uh, put your hand over the top. The air should be coming up and out. If it's not, change the rotation. So I always poke this guy through the top. You'll see later through the top of the fan guard. And uh, that way, if I do need to change the rotation, I'll have to take it all apart. It's right there. I can just swap it around. You basically just unplug this, spin it, plug it back in, and that changes the rotation. All right. So, what we're going to do is mount this guy.
sure they're pretty snug and uh, we'll tighten them down make sure they're tight once this baby's in anyway okay all right now if we can get through here we will and, uh, it's just too big we can do one at a time Sorry if uh, camera angles aren't the best. Just started using the GoPros here. I'm going to be able to get all four of these through. It's just not enough room. Let's see. Nah, won't fit. All right, well, gave it a shot. Like I said, you can't always reuse these covers. Sometimes it's just uh, too small. We only had three wires going through there on the OEM motor, so was a little bit bigger we would have had it but that's fine in this case um, what I usually do is throw some wire ties Definitely want to wire tie it, keep it secure because you don't want these wires flapping down and hitting the fan blade. like it should be good. Now, I'm going to put the hub on. And we want to line up this flat part. You can see one side is flat. Line that up with the hole. So the key tighten right down on that flat part and then I'm going to make sure the fan is just a little bit up off that we want to make sure that the fan blade is just a little bit higher than the fan housing the fan motor and that way it doesn't hit so that looks pretty good there. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb under there. Don't want it hitting any of those bolts that we cut off.
Okay. What else is back there? Oh yeah, this guy. And as I said before, I like I usually like to stick them up through the little fan guard, but sometimes the little guard the guard you can't get it through there. So you know, in that case, I usually just bend the guard a little bit. You know, especially on an older model up on a rooftop. I usually just bend it a little something just to get it through. So, it'll end up sticking out just like that. Sometimes I put a wire tie around it, but there's really no danger of it getting back in there. We'll wire tie one side. Just to be safe. Give it a spin. Looks good. And that's how it should spin. You give it a little spin like that, it should go around, you know, four, five, six times. Those are good bearings. If it only goes around maybe once, twice, and then stops, and you got some bad bearings. Um, you'll also hear them if they're if they're real bad. It it won't go at all. You'll try to turn this thing, and it'll be like. Uh, you'll hear them, but uh, head bearings. Okay. So now we're ready to stab this fan back in. Now, the way I'm going to line it up is <clears throat> so these wires will go through this hole. You can see I got them running right along here. And this guy will be right there. So I'm going to hold it just like this. The important part right now is not allowing this fan blade to hit anything and get bent because that'll ruin the whole day. And I'm just going to keep it safe, hold it with my hand while I use my other hand to poke these wires through as far as I can. So, now the downside to not using that um, shroud, that it wouldn't fit, is uh, these wires can rub on that little penetration there. So basically right, right where it's going through that hole, over time, the vibration will make that uh, wire rub and then bear out and short out so it's best to protect that wire if you can somehow and um, sometimes what I'll do is um where'd that shroud go that we got rid of there it is so I'll end up cutting this I'll slice this and just wrap it around the wire tape it off stick it through that hole just to protect it right at that penetration so I don't see my snips in my bag I do have some scissors up here I don't know if that's gonna work but let's see yeah 
Scissors are doing it. Really all you need is something like that. do it from down here yep Man. Oh, this thing's tough That's better. I like that. Now our wire is protected. Not gonna rub. I'm gonna throw a wire tie around that just to keep it here so it doesn't slide down. Basically the way I do it is I just fold it like this. Stick it down and try to make it come back up. And then grab it. You gotta bend it real good. That's nice. All right. Now we're going to feed these wires over to the other side. So, as you can see, the rescue motor wires are not quite long enough. 
not as long as the OEM motor wires. So what we're going to do is wire tie onto them. That's all. I, I'm sorry, wire nut onto them. I don't think. Let me see something. See if I got enough slack to get up and out of here. I do. That way I can keep my wire connections inside the electrical compartment. Okay. So what we're going to do is reuse some of the wire off the old unit or the old fan here. One more piece of wire for capacitor. four wire instead of a three. I wonder if I can just use this. Yeah. I'm removing this wire here that was going to the old capacitor, this is just a hot wire. Um, I'm not going to be using it. So maybe I can use it for the new capacitor. Eh, I'd rather not cut that. We'll just leave it in place. It's fine right there. I believe I have some stay cons. So, let's see. our 
two hots are going to be black and red on the old wire. So I need some wire nuts. I think I got some in the bag. If not, I might have to run down. It's over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to run down. Got a bunch of yellow wire nuts in the truck. Go get. Really hoping this capacitor would be reached far enough to put the capacitor just off to the side, but it doesn't look like I got that. So, uh, black one's not going to be used. We're just going to cut that off and wire nut it. Shit, stay. two capacitor wires.
Alright. Now we got our four wires. Hot, hot, capacitor, capacitor. So, our two hots are just gonna go right onto the contactor. Two capacitor wires will go right onto the capacitor. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the uh, Universal Turbo 200. Uh, I don't know if this is the 200, but it's you know it's like the Turbo 200 multi capacitance capacitor. So trying to keep all my trash straight. I don't like trash blowing around the roof. Now if we look, we got 10 microfarads, and that's what we want. And to get that, looks like we need a jumper wire from 2.5 to 7.5, and then from the motor, land our common, that's going to be the white stripe. You know, there's two wires coming off the motor, there's two, two gray wires. One has a white stripe. That's going to go to common. The other one's going to go here. And typically that one will go to your, your highest uh, microfarad terminal, which is 7.5. But we got to run a jumper from 2.5 to 7.5. They used to give you little jumper wires with it. Um, but they don't give them to you anymore, unfortunately. It's, it's we're trying to see. Oh, here they are. Uh, the bottom I didn't see. There's been a couple I've been getting some of the Turbo 200s that don't have them. Okay, so Looks like the battery and one of my cameras died. I'm gonna go down and grab another one. Come right back. So we got our mini turbo capacitor. We got a jump from 2.5 to 7.5. And that's gonna give us our 10. Right here on the paper. 10 microfarads, jumper. So now what we want is this one here with the white stripe. It's going to go to our common. Just like that. The other one, the solid, that's going to go to 7.5. Just like that. And then we screw that in.
the wire ties. Pretty good. Okay, now we got to screw in Vanguard. Now, if we look, they give you the little ground wire. That's got to go. Now, I, I like to put it in between like that. Just like that. Okay. Put another wire tie around there after I know that our rotation is good. And looking in there at the position of the fan, the way it's spinning, uh, height-wise, it looks good. It's basically right at uh, the bottom rim of this hole, so it should work okay. Um, the problem is it, when that fan, when that fan gets too far down uh, below the rim of the hole the air doesn't go up it just kind of recirculates in there and the fan spins and does nothing and that's when you got problems so it looks okay to me those are in Gonna check my nuts one more time, make sure they're good. Pretty tight. One thing I always do is uh, spin that fan by hand, and you know, I'll take a little screwdriver, stick it in there, and push it. We've already seen it spin a few times, but I'm gonna reach in and just give it a spin. We're checking to make sure that uh, it's not hitting anything, any wires in there, not hitting a coil, not hitting the casing in the machine. Just to make sure it's all good so when we start it up there's no damage done. Um, okay, I think we're ready at this point to turn her on. I'm going to close up this panel over here. I don't know what the thermostat's calling right now, so we may have to go down and do that. I always clear everything away from the fan because this baby starts up and starts vibrating. All your screws and tools can vibrate over and fall in. It makes more work. So, let's 
just kind of get everything out of the way. All these little hardware screws and stuff, extras, and I save them because they will save you one day and another job. So come over here, throw them in my box. All right. Take one last look before we energize. Make sure we're all good. Everything's in where it should be. Not leaving any loose ends. May have to. thought maybe it would time out for a few minutes, but nope, came right on. over to that other one that's just like it see what the air feels coming out of there I can feel heat over here kind of coming out at me. Heat should be going up. So I'm gonna shut her down. I'm gonna reverse my rotation. It just didn't feel like it was coming out like it should. Didn't necessarily even feel like it was sucking in, but I think it is because I went over to the other machine I felt that one and man it, it was coming out real good so I think we're gonna reverse rotation here uh, it just didn't feel right and you always trust your gut you know usually you put your hand over it and woof. you know sometimes they come out at a weird angle you know and you got to kind of move around a little bit but you know trust your gut man you you know you know you reach down and you feel Hey, there shouldn't be air, heat really coming out of here because the air should be going in. Alright, we're just going to give it a minute for the uh, refrigerant to equalize before we try to start back up. Pack up a little bit while I'm waiting. Let's fire back up and see what happens. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Now we're getting real good airflow. Feels good. And like I said before, that's why I like to have this guy up top like that. Because uh, I would have had to take, take the fan shroud off and reach under there. And it gets a lot harder.
and uh, looks like this one's gonna be done. Just gonna clean up here, button everything back up. It. she's up and running and I'm off to the next one give us a call for any commercial or residential heating or air conditioning needs thank you have a good day